All right, here we go with week 13. Everybody should be hitting their stride right now. Even if you're not working, you should be in the video every week and learning and getting ready for when it's your turn on the field. I'm going to start off with some illegal defenses. Here we go. We talk about belt and alignment. Let's keep an eye on our DB here. He's going to move inside the belt. Why is he doing that? He's aligned on our receiver back here who decides to go in motion across the formation. Our DB decides, nope, I'm not going with them, and he retreats. This is not a foul. It's a good job by the DB recognizing he's not going to go across the formation with them, and he is retreating. And the takeaway is for the officials to understand this, but uh, when we see the retreat happening, even if the snap's like right now, let's say right now we snap it, Technically, he's inside the belt, but because he's retreating and we're not down on the goal line, we're going to let that go as no advantage, not big enough, which is our overriding philosophy in this league. Here, it's not even close. The DB does a nice job getting out of the belt, but just remember, officials, if he's, if he's close and he's retreating and we're not on the goal line, we're going to let that go. It's kind of what the back judge sees. He's pointing, not so concerned about holding that point. Um, We'd like the umpires to do it, but back judge has a lot going on down here in the end zone, so no problem not holding the point. He's got a lot to do, but look at number five. Where is his foot? Man, that's not toes on the line, is it? That's not even heels on the line. That's a monster foul illegally inside the belt. There's the flag, and the back judge continues to officiate the play. Back judge, when you're in the end zone and the umpire is into the offensive backfield, you assume his role to some extent, give the point, and you got to pick up that big foul right there. Linebacker, number five, illegally inside the belt at the snap. Look at that left foot. That's huge. Great call. Okay, illegal blitz here. Where is our back judge pointing? Just like we said, he's pointing out to the left. That means what? He's the one that can blitz, but he's going to go. Umpire in the offensive backfield sees it, and we got it. Ball's in the alley. We got an illegal blitz. That's a great call. We've missed these the past couple of weeks, getting these illegal blitzes down near the goal line. So we've got it on two counts. Remember, we see our back judge is pointing to his left, which meaning means he declared. So end of story. As soon as he goes, even if he goes up the A-gap, it's an illegal blitz. He didn't. He went outside. But the ball's in the alley. We got an illegal blitz. We have a flag down. Really good job getting this. And here we go, looking at some mechanics from last week. Lots of good things to see on this play. Let's start with our coach. He's where he should be against the wall. He's out of the way about 10 yards back. Watch our umpire. Look how he remains focused. He's focused. He's focused. Now we got to run down the sideline, slow it down. Look at our wing. He sees it, the ball's broken the play, and he owns the call. He sells it. Great work. Lots of good officiating on this play. We're going to see our line judge at the uh, top of the screen. He's going to try his best to hold the line, hold the goal line as best he can until he has to get pushed off. We're going to see the back judge hustle up to try to get a view, and we're going to see our H crashing all the way across the field, understanding it may fall on him. Good work by these three officials down here on the goal line. See at the top of the screen, <laughs> RL, he's trying to hold that goal line as long as he can. And he's got to get off it. See our back judge, see the play coming underneath. He may have to get that. And our head linesman, knowing it may fall on him, crashing across the field. Good work by the crew. And to top it all off, our umpire and our referee closing to make sure non no nonsense arises. Goal line mechanics, snap between the 10 and 15. We want our head linesman to get to the goal line if he can. Here, he makes the attempt but can't get there, and we don't have any coverage on the goal line. When the back judge reads this play coming underneath, we got it coming underneath right now. The back judge needs to immediately react up to the goal line and be prepared to rule either way. We can't have you floating along the back wall here. We've got no coverage on the goal line. 
Our H tried to get there but couldn't. He was pushed off, and we got no coverage on the goal line. So remember, review this in your pregame. These are the little things we need to take care of now. Back judge, when you see the play coming underneath like this, and you know the H is gonna, may have a rough time getting there, he may get pushed off as he does here, you can't be floating along the back wall. Does us no good officiating air back there. You need to read the play and step up to the goal line. It's coming underneath. Let's go up to the goal line. Help our H out. This is a rarity, but we missed it, and we can't. We can't uh, make the coaches use challenges to get these kicks correct. This kick is good. Back judge is in good position. He just loses a little bit of focus. Let's look at the end zone shot. And here's the end zone shot. We can clearly see the kick is good. It hits the obstruction, which is the net. The net is wound tight to the uprights in this particular arena. Some, some arenas have the nets behind it, but here the net is tied to the wires. And as the kick approaches, we can see it clearly hits inside the wire Hits the net and bounces out. So per Rule 10.3G, the officials would rule this good. So talk about this in pregame. Back judges, all you back judges out there, don't be put in this position. Think about it. That's a kick. i got to be focused. I can't miss this. Remember, you're back against the wall. Slide when the kick's coming into the to the upright of your side. And you've got to focus and see this all the way. It bounces off. The net, right there, it's good, no matter where it lands down here, because if that net wasn't there, this kick would sail through the uprights and be considered good. You cannot take a playoff, including a try. Looks like our head linesman here is going to be shot out of a cannon. Look at the focus. We got a fake, sees it, crashes, and sells it. Great work. Point is, you can't take a playoff, even a try. Again, in the category of never take a playoff, here's a try for two. Some nonsense is brewing there in the end zone, right about, you can see it, right here. And look at the reaction by our wing official. Just hustles in, back judge coming into, referee closing, not taking a playoff, getting in with a voice and physical presence to quell any potential nonsense. Just more good umpire mechanics, only one aligned at the back of the box, but he points and holds the point until the snap. Good habit to get into. Good work. Good mechanics here by the umpire. The belt's the 23. We've got one linebacker aligned at the back of the box on the belt, but he's still going to point. He's only got one back there, but let's point every play. Good job here. Our left defensive end on this was outside shoulder to shoulder, so good job by the umpire here tapping him in. He recognizes it, prevents the foul. Good preventive officiating by our umpire. Be patient, back judge. Got to be real patient. Let's take a look at our back judge in action. It's on the goal line where he needs to be. He sees it, he processes it, and he sells it. Great work by the back judge. He's not touched. He can get up and go and does. Great job by the back judge. Seeing it, processing it and selling it. Sometimes you don't need any assistant. You gotta see it all yourself. He's down, not by opponent contact. He can get up, back judge is patient, and we got a touchdown. Well officiated play. Everyone's doing a really good job with the replay challenges. Let's take a look at some from last week. Here we go. Defender not down in his stance. Let's take a look. Do we have a foul? Probably, let's say it wasn't called and the defense got a pick six here and the offensive coach challenged it. What will we do in replay? Well, first thing we want to do is we want to look at the ball, right, in relation to the hand. That's all we're looking at is the hand up before the ball moves. The hand's up, the ball hasn't moved. The hand's up. And now the ball moves. So we can go frame by frame to detect this foul. So the hand is up, and then the ball moves. So we could create the foul. Now let's contrast this play uh, with the next one we're going to take a look at. And here's another close one with the nose guard. Is he down at the snap or not? 
we can see him moving with the ball based on our standard. We see the ball right there. Let's watch when it moves. Go frame by frame. And we can see the defender is moving with the ball, so this is not a foul. But this is the process you would go through in replay. If we had a foul called on the field, we would reverse it to no foul. If we didn't have a flag down and the coach challenged that there was a foul, the ruling on the field of no call would stand because he's moving with the ball. Even with this end zone shot, we can still see the ball. We can still see the movement. This is not a foul. These are tough, but we can go frame by frame to see them or not see them, and this is not a foul. And what the heck, we'll show uh, one more. Center, is he down in his stance at the snap? If this went to replay, this is all, and this is all we see, we can't see his right hand, can we? So we don't know. Even under our standard, we can't tell. Looks like he's moving with the snap. So whatever the call was on the field would stand. If we had a foul, we'd stand it. If we didn't have a foul, we'd stand it. Because we just can't see his right hand. We can see him moving. He's moving before the ball moves, but we don't know whether his right hand is down on the ground. So even with our lesser standard, just know we're not going to make up a foul here. We're just going to stand whatever the call was on the field. So just use your discretion, and this is how you should use it when you have a play such as this. You can't see his hand. We do see the nose his shoulders moving, but his hand conceivably could still be on the ground when the ball starts moving. Use your discretion wisely. That's what you've been doing so far this season. It's much appreciated. Keep up the good work and replay. Replay. What happens if we if a coach challenges an onside kick? Well, all aspects of the kick will be re reviewed, not just the aspect the coach is challenged. So we're going to review who's offside, who isn't offside, who touched the ball first, did the ball go 10 yards, blocks, etc. On this particular play, we had a flag down for an illegal block by the kicking team. Okay, The flag was picked up because they decided... Uh, the receiving team was the aggressor. So when we're deciding the blocks, we always have to take into account who the aggressor was. So here the crew correctly picked up the flag on that. But if we continue to look at all aspects of the play, did the kicking team touch this ball prior to it going 10 yards? I think on this angle, we're going to see it right there at the 8-yard line. It was touched, and I think the next angle... We'll confirm it so we can see you right there. He's attempting to secure possession of the ball. We've got a touch, an illegal touch, at eight yards, and the crew correctly awarded the ball to the team at the eight-yard line. Just remember, when onside kicks go to review, we will review all aspects of the kick. And it's time for our weekly look at the rules. Jumping all over the place. Let's take a look. We remember from last week, a running back set in the alley to snap can block the blitzing linebacker at the defensive ends below the waist while the ball is in the alley. That's it. That is the only time he can block below the waist. There can be no blocks below the waist anywhere else on the field except for the offensive lineman. We'll get into that in a couple of plays. But let's watch the running back. He's going to go downfield at about the 22-yard uh, line or so. 23, right there, throws a vicious block below the waist. And it's not called. Until we start to make these calls on the field, the teams are going to continue to get away with it. We have got to flag that right in front of the umpire. We cannot miss these safety fouls. And here's the play from last week, which we missed. As a reminder... Only the running back set and in the alley at the snap may block the blitzing linebacker or the defensive ends below the waist while the ball is in the alley. That's it. And what do we have? We had a motion receiver come across the box and go low with a dangerous block. Again, missed. We cannot continue to miss these. Make it a point of emphasis in your pregame this week to be on high alert for these illegal blocks below the waist. we got to get them out of the game. Let's talk about our linemen. First, the rule. 
No blocks below the waist anywhere on the field. Now we got the exceptions. We talked about the running back set in the alley at the snap can cut the defensive ends or the blitzing linebacker. Let's talk about the offensive linemen now. They can't cut block unless the exception. They can cut the opposing defensive lineman immediately following the snap, provided the cut occurs within two yards of the outside of the alley. That's the only time these guys can block below the waist. Now let's talk about our offensive guards, okay? We know the rule. They can only block the player directly across from them. It's got to be within two yards of the alley, okay? And it's got to be immediately. So let's watch our offensive guards. Kick step out. They cut. Those are legal blocks. Now let's talk about the center. Same thing. He can block the lineman directly across from him as long as it's immediate. Is this immediate? He goes high, goes low. That is close to being immediate. That's about as close as you can get. So we wouldn't want to flag here. If the center retreated maybe three yards and then went low, that would not be considered immediate. So on this play, all three linemen have legal cut blocks. The two guards, immediately to the outside, kick step, they go down. And the center, which is what we're looking at right now, we're going to see him go high and immediately go low. That's okay, too. But if that center took that block maybe back to the one or the two-yard line before he decided to go low, we got to be aware of that, and that would be illegal. But here, all three blocks are legal. We just got to remember the basic rule. We should just outlaw all blocks below the waist, but we haven't. It's only the running back set in the alley. He can take out the defensive ends or the blitzing linebacker. And, of course, the offensive lineman, they can cut as long as it is immediate and against the player directly in front of them. Let's not miss these. Moving forward, talk about it in your pregame this week. And this will be the last in the series. Let's look at our our running back. He is set in the alley at the snap. So he can block below the waist. He can block the blitzing linebacker or the defensive ends below the waist so long as the ball's in the alley. Look what he does here. Ball's out of the alley, and he goes low. Now he whiffs, so we got a nothing here. But what happens if he connected on this block? This would be an illegal block below the waist. One, we know he's set in the alley. We know he can block the blitzing linebacker below the waist. We know he can block the defensive end below the waist, but the ball's got to be in the alley. So when you have a delay like this, odds are the ball's out of the alley. So if he connected on this play with a block below the waist, we'd want a flag down on the ground. Again, it's kind of delayed here, so we can basically expect right now the ball's out of the alley. So he can't block anyone below the waist. If he connected here, that would be a foul. Just be aware of it. Let's watch the end of this play. We're going to see the defensive coach get a little excitable. This team's going to recover a fumble. We understand the excitement. Good beanbag there, Mr. Wing official. But let's talk to this coach after the play. He's just getting in too close. Here he's going to come pat the official on the back. Hey, it's our ball. It's our ball. We know that. We don't need a reminder. I just want the officials to make sure we talk to this coach, tell him to stay back, and if this continues again, then we hit him with a sideline warning. We don't see too many of these, but let's take a look. There's a snap infraction right there. Correctly shut down by the crew is a false start. That's what it looks like. Let's be ready for these. Good job by the crew. Our officials are watching. We got a pull and shoot here on a try. You got to be looking for this kind of stuff. Do not take a try off. The crew gets it. Good job. Pull and shoot. Break it down. Slow it down. Okay. We can see our inside guard here. Grab, pull, very slight, but he opens up the hole for the potential block that gets stuffed by the back. But we got to have that as a call. Talk about this pregame. Who's going to get this pull and shoot on the tries? Cannot take tries off. The crew did not hear. This is a great call. We're at the end of the game. We've got four in the box. Onside kick is expected. Let's stop it right at the point of contact. Right there's the point of contact. He's broken the plane of glass. Easy call. We don't see it too often. 
He's broken the plane of glass. Easy call. We had two flags down, offsetting. We had KOF. We had the receivers offside. Good focus. Onside kick situation. We got to be ready. It's rare when we see the receiving team offside, but on this play, they were. Anticipating the kick. Our player here just went a little bit too early. And you can see he's broken the plane and he smashed the plane of glass. Two flags down. Let's redo it. Nice job. Onside kick time happening every week. Lots of onside kicks. Here we're going to have the ball touched by the receiving team. The kicking team player picks it up on the run and continues downfield, but that ain't happening. We can see our official right here knows the rules. He's killing it. It'll be the uh, kicking team's ball at the spot of recovery. Good job knowing the rules. Be ready for it. Happens now two weeks in a row. Late in the game, kicking team is up by six, soon to be up by seven because we got a focus crew. What do we said about wings on free kicks? You remain planted. You are a houseplant on the goal line until that runner enters into the field of play. First, the ball was touched in the field of play. So good job by our wing official winding the clock. Ball's touched in the field of play. He's winding the clock. But our two officials are still planted on the goal line. This is why we have mechanics. Stay on the goal line until the ball enters the field of play. It's not going to make it. And the kicking team now has a seven-point lead. Good focus by our wing officials on this play. Do the mechanics. They're there for a reason. I'm going to keep showing this play every week. Look at our DBs. We're in scrimmage kick formation. There is no belt. If either of these DBs penetrate the line of scrimmage, even by a yard, it is an illegal scrimmage kick rush, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. They do not here. They are well coached. They are disciplined. They are just on guard duty waiting for a botched snap or a blocked kick, and they'll be poised to attack. The takeaway for the officials are, even if he starts moseying back, oh, I'm just going back to my bench, and that ball has not been kicked, it is a foul. We do not want to get jammed up with a player just moseying back this way, and we have a block kick, all of a sudden he has an advantage. He cannot break the line of scrimmage until that ball is blocked or the snap hits the ground. That is your takeaway. Two well-coached, well-disciplined players. That's what we want to see. Umpires, got to be aware of this. He's going to run right at the umpire. This is an umpire pick early in the game. Use that warning. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. When you've got that player running right at you and you got to dance like that, use the umpire pick Warning for the first time. So we would drop the flag for the warning here on the umpire pick. And the offended team could take the option of replaying the down, which obviously they would do here. Remember, a warning is for the first occurrence for an umpire pick. But the defense will have the option to accept the result of the play or replay the down. So here we got a completion and a pretty decent gain. So they would choose to replay the down. Any subsequent umpire pick is OPI. Umpires, be aware. When they're running at you like that, nice dance move there, but throw the flag for an umpire pick. And that, my friends, is a wrap for week 13. If you're working this week, focus every single play, even those tries, even those free kicks where you're not suspecting an onside kick. Focus, focus, focus. We're doing a good job focusing. Continue to focus, focus, focus. Each and every play. Don't play it. Don't take a play off. Keep working hard. Talk to you next week.